Welcome to JSA TV, JSA TV Live, the newsroom for telecom and data center professionals. I'm Barb Mitchell coming to you today live from the beautiful French Riviera, where we're speaking today with investors, data center platform owners, energy specialists, all converging here at this first annual Platform Congress event. And joining me today, I have the pleasure of introducing to you Lena Tayera, founder and CEO of Orient Consulting Services. Lena, it's a pleasure to have you. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, just as an introduction? Oh, hi. The pleasure is mine. Um, I've actually uh, have my own. I've set up my own company, uh, Orient Consulting Services. Um, uh, after having had a career as a television producer, actually, and working in market research and business intelligence, having met the uh, chairman of platform, Philip Lowe, and he's opened this opportunity for me to collaborate with him on a platform uh, that brings in uh, for inclusivity in the TMT space. We felt in 2008, if you remember, there was a crash and the only sector that was still working, you know, against mm -hmm. the grain was really the telecom sector. And where specifically was the Middle East, um, a lot of the big telcos were loaded at the time and they were looking to actually expand and invest elsewhere. So this is how I started being involved in the TMT sector and uh, kind of build up to this point where we're talking the conversation has moved so much, mm -hmm. you know, because now we're talking about, uh, you know, the, the future technology that's going to enable the metaverse, you know, what's it going to be? What's it, you know, what kind of, is it going to be cloud or is it going to be edge, etc.? So the whole set of conversation, the fundamentals are the same. Is that the we're talking about the infrastructure that's powering our digital future? Yeah. And um, th so the other dimension of this, I don't know if you want me to mention now my my own initiative. I created um, uh, a publication called Let's Talk Tech. And this is uh, a in personal initiative because I feel these conversations that we having here, uh, which is amongst uh, specialists and geeks and te technicians, what have you, need to be expanded. We need to bring in people into this conversation, widen the debate, uh, not only geographically, but also different cultures and different regions. Mm -hmm. um, and there's so much being talked about on that front here as you said a lot of people are coming back together for you know one of the first times really since um things closed down a sure. couple of years ago but uh it's you know sustainability as you said the metaverse all the new trends in the industry are being discussed and and you mentioned um your let's talk uh, communication. Let's, let's talk, talk tech. Let's talk tech <laughs> <laughs> newsletter. Um, it's supposed you... to be catchy. Yeah, yeah, let's talk tech. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about what you're hoping to, to gain here from being at this event uh, this week, uh, from financial insights and, and more. Well, um, uh, I have a practice that is a long-term practice to follow the information or uh, or the story from the story maker from the original source of it and there is no better source uh for government or corporates uh than uh, level c so ceo level when they get and especially when you put them together in a third party event so they're not actually speaking a written word by their PR teams or some corporate communication. They're actually sharing their insights and their knowledge. This has helped me grow a lot. It's helped me gain a lot of perspective from, you know, but you have to be curious as well. You have to want to. And I would like to relay this passion for learning and this curiosity to other people by writing storytelling about uh, technology and what's going on in technology, trying to interest people. Um, so hopefully they will meet me halfway and, and, and be interested because it's for all our good. I think uh, people who are designing and thinking about the technology and planning the future cannot do this uh, in a myopic way on their own in some mm -hmm. plush office or at home, wherever they, that may be. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they will benefit from widening the debate and including a variety of people because of the, you know, it's the correct ethical thing to do. 
Mm -hmm. uh, the future of this planet is we're sharing it. So it's for all of us to yeah. be uh, knowledgeable about what they do. But also you want to make sure that uh, if you like, the marketplace is knowledgeable enough so you don't uh, face problems and you have inf what, it, what I call informed adoption. So whoever is going to buy your technology or use your product, etc., will be informed about it and will do so, uh, if you like, responsibly uh, to themselves, to the society, to the environment. And this, at the same time, it has a third dimension. Sorry, I'm kind of going on about this. But the other dimension, it will lessen uh, the work for regulators because it's self-regulating. When people know about something, mm -hmm. people have enough wisdom and intelligence to know how they will interact with it. And I think you mentioned a little bit about you know, bringing different people to the table in this conversation. And that is a nice segue, I think, into talking about um, diversity, which has been a topic in our industry for, for quite some time now. But um, we, um, I know that tomorrow you're speaking on a panel, actually, with uh, Jamie, our, our founder and CEO, yes. is uh, moderating, moderating a panel yes. with you uh, on the role of women in technology. Yeah, I'm very excited. I'm looking forward yeah. to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you want me to talk about yeah yeah I mean what, tell us about how what you think is you know what are the benefits of of implementing that sort of viewpoint okay well it, okay I think about things in a different ways so I'll try and introduce that thought so we tend to look at uh, I mean the old fashioned way to look at the value of introducing something new as in KPI but but we kind of rose above this because I think. Uh, there is a new metric, if you like, in the corporate world, which is called the SG. Yes, so yeah. this is something that everyone will be looking at, your investor, your financier, uh, the general public. And I hope that the ESG is not going to be box ticking. It's going to be a genuine conviction uh, on behalf of a big organization that don't have diversity to rethink that and think how they kind of how this could be, how their performance can be better improved by having dif different perspectives yeah. from different cultures and different geographic location. I'll mention two examples for you, maybe to bring the idea closer. One is historic and one is very modern. So I'll take you from the days of the days of Marco Polo. Yes. Okay. So he, uh, <laughs> Let's he start there. Yeah, shall start we? there. Yeah. So he's he's traveled the world uh, and he actually. You know, his destination was China. So he wanted to serve or work with Genghis Khan. And we are very close to this man who controlled all these armies and who yeah. pretty much ruled the whole world right, at the right, time. Yeah. What he did, he sent him on an expeditions to go to different places and figure out how people do things, to learn from them. Right. Okay. Yeah. Now, bring you back to current history. Um, I've been watching some of the things I do when I don't have the chance to see CEOs face to face mm -hmm. is actually to watch podcasts of CEOs. Yes, Sorry, yeah. I'm a self-admitted podcast <laughs> addict yes, of CEO. Fair. Please Good continue admission. to do them. <laughs> <laughs> so I've, I've, before I came, I've heard uh, Elon Musk describe uh, mm. uh, the, if you like, sustainability of a company is its usefulness or it's per not just perceived usefulness how useful are you to society or to consumer or to a citizen yeah. so he believes in okay you are useful to people you will continue you will be a useful company this is pretty much esg in a nutshell yeah so let's esg is i agree i mean it's it's it seems to be it's something that every single organization has a position on or is developing a position on is thinking about how to advance their their efforts towards this um, and that's an important part of what's being discussed I think this week at, at this conference talk about some other tech innovation uh, specifically in the MENA district and are, are there some things that you could highlight uh, yes there's a couple of trends maybe worth uh pointing here one it's uh, at the highest level there's a difference between the western region uh developed uh, economies and the developing well major developing economies so for example uh, in the gcc countries gulf cooperation council it's the government that is driving uh the tech advancement and the growth not the private sector 
Um, so eventually, you know, they'll have to come on board, and so would the general population, because you can't, you know, you can't. We say, you know, they're saying in Arabic, one hand doesn't clap, right? right. <laughs> so you need everyone on board. But I'm talking who's driving, who's leading. Whereas here, you see, it's all of this is a private sector. Mm -hmm. They're driving all the innovation. Right. Okay, and right. the government is way behind. So this is one trend. It's going to be. There's a lot of funds, and especially that this year has been a good year. I mean, Saudi Arabia is the fastest growing economy this year. Mm -hmm. It's faster than Asia, than the G7, and other major uh, emerging yeah. economies. And they're very dedicated in investing heavily they're into very, innovation. The, yeah. All the money is sovereign in the sovereign wealth funds yes. in the Middle yeah. East. Yeah. So watch out for mergers and acquisitions. Um, they'll be looking for to to uh, expand, if you like, their their capabilities within the tech sector, and it's going to be very competitive because there's a, there are a few potential um, unicorns, and everybody wants them, right? Yeah. So that's uh, the trend on the one side. On on the on the other hand, I think the region itself. They have their, we have our own innovation. I consider myself from the Middle East, so I am an Arab person who's lived in London forever. Right. Okay. So I would say we. Uh, so yeah, the, there is innovation that is happening in the ecosystem. I'll give you one example now, but they, they're not very good at communicating about it. It's back to that kind of weakness, the weak spot of communication. People mm -hmm. don't know what the other person is doing. It's like you don't know what the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. Um, but I think in the, um, the blockchain and crypto uh, space, uh, one um, uh, emirate is uh, driving forward, which is uh, Dubai. Yep. So there's a lot of people who are working in the uh, crypto, Bitcoin, Web3, Metaverse, and what have you, this whole ecosystem. Mm -hmm. They're finding it very attractive. There are incentives to go and set up in Dubai. Uh, and to create, I mean, this, this is this is the generation of, you know, innovators. They're creating, you know, the next groundbreaking usage mm -hmm. of the blockchain. Because at the moment, the blockchain is still interconnected with uh, crypto and Bitcoin. But there are much wider usage for it. Right. And once you've got this system is established there, and it's kind of slightly, they will have to figure out, I mean, they have regulation and incentive in place mm -hmm. but it's interesting for us to see what mistakes are made what we can mm -hmm. learn from that and there's and, so many applications that are yet untapped we were actually exactly. just speaking of that this morning that you can't have crypto without blockchain but you can have blockchain without crypto and yes. in fact there's so many applications that are still being discovered and still being explored that exactly so are a, a benefit exactly we're talking about the cre just creating communities and ecosystem i think that's the way forward going forward yeah. uh, and collaborations these are i leave you with these uh my pet love words yeah. <laughs> to the uh, yeah, yeah 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 to civilization we all want we all want uh, a better world but mm -hmm. nobody's quite defined it so let, let's yeah. just end with one final question and I, I think because as we start to think of the future and I, I think that um, it, it may be nice just to highlight a couple things I know you're leading a panel tomorrow on the future of Neom can you tell us a little bit about that just a couple of key points uh, Neom, was t Neom was today, and I can give you a little, uh, I think we had a very nice insight, because yeah. uh, not everyone knows what Neom is, but we just figured we out. We just had a little what conversation was, about you, it. Yeah, it's what interesting. Was, what was the name about? Uh, new Future. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we, uh, we had today a man who is helping uh, create the infrastructure on w that's going to power up this future so what you hear from now uh, now and again you know you will have um articles about neom and the line and oxagon and this and that but how are you going to power all this up so there is there are people already thinking about the digital inf infrastructure that it will enable this dream right so this is the kind of moving from smart city to cognitive city to move to cognitive city you're going to have to if you like um uh, analyze a lot of data yeah, maybe a lot you, of work to be done there's a lot of work yeah. to do. so we we've had those insights from Sir neon but we also heard from them a call to partners and they trying to attract uh, they know they can't do this alone nobody can the future to be created is going to be a collective thing. It's too and massive. Collaborative. Enough. Collaborative. Right. My to favorite word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah. They, it was, they, they called for people to say, uh, come and work with us. 
yeah. and it was a very so interesting yeah. and yeah so we've learned i mean i think they broke they breaking uh, the ground of the new the first data center which will be massive but there are more in the pipeline yeah. and data center is um, you know is a high capital uh, business that uh, there's a whole ecosystem connected with it including uh, financier and investor real estate you know you've seen the kind of people yeah everyone here that's here They're and this is what this is what was all amazing part of making it come exactly to life. Yeah. that's what what is amazing is sometimes you go to events and you hear one thing but today we've had We've been walked Everything. around every the whole, corner. Yeah. The whole picture, yeah. yeah. Well, this has been really interesting. Where can we send our viewers if, who want to connect with you or, or learn more about all these uh, great insights that you can share? Oh, um, my LinkedIn profile. Yeah. Okay. Um, I haven't, uh, I have to admit, I am uh, behind to develop, uh, I want to develop much more platforms. Yeah. Uh, but please bear with me until I do. At the moment, yeah. I'm finding it, I have enough time and bandwidth just to maintain yeah, a presence on LinkedIn. Yeah. I know, I need uh, we'll... maybe more support to develop this uh, initiative of mine. So anybody who can support my initiative, let's talk. Please yeah. uh, contact me. I'm on LinkedIn. Yeah, we'll put it up on the screen for you uh, here. Yes. And and thank you again so much for tuning in to JSA TV Live as we thank stream today from Pleasure. Platform Congress in Antibes in the French Riviera. Happy networking. <laughs>